Hey everybody, it's the interview queen, Alicia Atut here, and I'm very excited to be catching up with Sadie Gibbs. Hello. Hello. And Angie. I'm Angie, of course. <laughs> Now, to let you guys in on why we're dressed up and looking so snazzy in our pajamas, we were going back and forth through Twitter. <laughs> I know. We're like, you look great. We are going back and forth through Twitter, and she's like, okay, well, it's going to be later here. Can we do this like in pajamas? And I was like, yeah, I live in my pajamas. <laughs> so here we are. So I guess to kick things off, how's your day going? Your, well, your evening over there. How's everything been? It's been really good. It's been a good day. Um, I did an hour and a half dog walk today. And clients and everything, but yeah, it's good it's training. But other than that, I'm looking forward to my move to America. That's what I'm preparing for mostly lately. So closing everything off here, but yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, you actually just share that with everybody. So is this something that you've kind of been thinking about for a while, or tell me a bit about that? It's been in the back of my mind since I got signed. I think it was always something I wanted to do, but. I had other commitments and everything here that I was quite, you know, connected with. So it's been a hard process, I'd say, to to let go of things and um, and people. But um, of course. yeah, but it's you know what's right in your heart, and that's what I always say. You've got to follow your instincts. And for me, it's always been to oh, getting a email there. Yeah, for me, it's always been I've, I want to move and to give it a hundred percent. So yeah. I'm just excited now. I'm just ready for it. Where is and where, the... Go. I was just saying, where exactly did your heart end up settling on? Like, which state are you going to move to, and why did you decide to actually end up there? I never had it in mind because I'm a bit. I'm a country and western. I'm obsessed with it. So, um, yeah, that side of things, I would probably would have chosen Nashville or somewhere like Tennessee or. North Carolina, anything like that, it's kind of always been, I'd like to visit those places definitely, but I've actually, I'm going to Atlanta, so mainly for, because I'm moving mainly to, you know, get better in what I'm doing, you know, train four or five times a week if I'm not on shows, and that's where it's taken me, so we'll see where where the journey goes from there, but yeah, it's called One Fall, Um one full power factory yeah so that's the name of it but um it's qt's training school so i'm looking forward to it it's gonna be oh. gonna be good but it'd be good if that turns into something like an aw performance center maybe who knows right you never know that's super ex like you just must be thrilled right now not only because of the signing but now a move i mean that you're not going from state to state like this is really big so congratulations thank you <laughs> It's, it's crazy it really is but I am I'm excited so and we'll see where it all goes from there it's, it's an exciting journey but. Well, 20, 2019 really did feel like such a big year for you and of course we're talking about the AEW signing so tell me a little bit about the moment you were either approached given the call the text or whatever it may be uh, because that one call or email when when you read it or hear it like it, it oh. feels very life-changing yeah it, it almost didn't feel real I would say um for a long while um, it started to settle in, I think, in, I would say, probably when All Out was on, I started to think, wow, you know, this is what I'm going to be part of. And then you kind of start going through all the self-doubt and all of that kind of thing. But um, it really set in in August. That was when I was like, wow. But when I got the email initially, I was like, are you sure? Is this, is this really? Um, is this legit? <laughs> but it was crazy. It was it was surreal. The moment was because shortly before it, it was, I'd lost my granddad and just come back from Japan. And so the turnover and how everything was kind of coming into my life, it was a bit like all overwhelming. The whole year was because I don't think I had time to grieve and at the time, time to get oh, something to celebrate for, you know. So it was kind of like it was a it was a bit of a roller coaster um, okay. in 2019. But yeah, it was good. It was definitely a year of growth. So. I can't complain. Since we are reflecting right now, one thing I wanted to bring up was this video that you found that your dad sent you where you were wrestling your sister and you looked like you were like four or five. Like you were very, very young and it was adorable. 
that's that's what was crazy about it. I think it's always been in me, like how I fell into wrestling. It's it, it's surreal. It's crazy how it all happened because I generally knew nothing about the indies. I I knew nothing. I knew about WWE um, and Impact. They were the two main ones I kind of knew about. Uh, but when I got when I got my tryout, it's going way back. Got my tryout. Um, well, it's not way back. It was what three and a half years ago now. So it's all happened really fast. That was when, for me, I was like, "This is what. This is me. This is what I want to do." But I thought that when I saw the clip, when I first initially was looking online, I was coming out of figure competing because that kind of played its part in my life. And I was looking online. I was like saw a, an advert of I think it was Natalia and um, backstage fighting with uh, Nikki Bella believe it or not so it was a while ago now and I was like I want to do this and I just went straight on the WWE website and applied and got my tryout straight away wow. yeah it was crazy so and then from that moment I was just like it's always been in me I've always been a performer I've always been a bit of a show off um <laughs> hence the Sasuke <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's just crazy because yeah, but no, that was I was about yeah probably about four five there yeah so and I did I mean I weren't I watched it as a kid but yeah I was a gymnast so wasn't really acting like a gymnast there yeah <laughs> that video just made me feel like it was meant to be like you really looked like you're just so in it you're having so much fun with your little si or little sister I think it was. No, she's my big sister. <laughs> big sister? Oh, so you were going after your big sister. Look at you, hotshot. <laughs> Aw, but it, it, it was one of those full circle things when I saw it. It just, it made me smile. It was, it was really cute. Yeah, it was, it was definitely, like, when I saw it, I thought, yeah, it's definitely always been in me. But, yeah, amazing. Well, you are currently known as undefinable, and I love that because you do so many different things in the ring, and you never know what you're going to do next. Like, you're a yeah. total badass in there. Uh, so where did that come from? Did you coin yourself that? Did someone give you that nickname? I started as the Amazing Grace, um, which I always say to this day would always still be, like, my persona, my kind of what I base myself on. Um, but it's, that is it, what it is. It's more of a persona. It's more of something that should just come off rather than being called it. Um, so the undefinable sort of came from not being defined by any of the failures and the, like my, it was more of my athletic background. So everything that kind of felt like a failure all means something now when I'm in that ring, um, cause it all comes to play. And that's why I sort of come up with the undefinable because I've got so many different backgrounds, figure competing, pole vaulting, gymnastics and MMA that you kind of don't know what to expect in the ring because I've got that air of athleticism that comes in and that's what my character is all about it's just like always finding grace in what you do and never letting it make you bitter and hold you back because it always goes into something else and here I am wrestling Brian with AEW so yeah that makes me happy yeah, that's how I come up with the undefinable. I just, I never want to be defined, not by any of my characters, because you can always change, you can always evolve, and you can always, you might be dressing like a, like a, sometimes I'll dress like a cowgirl, and sometimes I'll dress like a rot chick, you know? Sometimes I combine the two. Me too. <laughs> and so it's like, I don't ever want to be defined because I change by the day, you know? So that's why I come up with the undefinable, because it was kind of like a, a it just every time I hear it, it kind of, endorses that strength in my character so yeah well we've been talking a lot about wrestling a lot about growing up um, but one thing I was curious about is now when you aren't on the road when you actually have that rare bit of downtime how is it spent aside from aside from training so I feel like when I ask this question everyone's like oh in the gym training <laughs> um I would say I spend it a journal I research a lot I'm into like kind of the universal I research a lot on angel numbers and all of that kind of thing um and I read uh and I go for long walks listening to audiobooks but mostly I would say it's spent training <laughs> and, yeah. and also I do I have clients as well I like to kind of share what I do still it'll always be my passion fitness as well it's a huge part of me it got me to where I am today it allowed me to do what I'm doing today 
it right. gave me freedom to train as much as I did and work around my job. So I kind of always have an attachment with coaching. And it's always giving something back as well. It's nice to give back. Like everything you go through should be to kind of inspire others as well. Like your story is kind of a lesson to help others, which, yeah, fitness allows me to do that. So, yeah. That's lovely. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for hopping on here. I don't want to take too much of your time tonight. You look so cozy, like you're about to just watch it from like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you so much for taking the time. I hope I get to see you sooner than later in person, and hopefully we can do a trendy. Pardon? Your PJs look trendy. <laughs> this this is just like a massive, massive. This is <laughs> what did yours it's say? A, um, it's a it's like a tar company. Stuff so it. it's just yeah. yeah see? Um, it's how I, how I rock it. But yeah, thank you a bunch. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening, and thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>